One of the coolest things about Kotlin is the ability to add functions to existing classes already inside of the standard library or other existing libraries. Now, for example, what I mean by that is it would be great if a string class, which is what this name is, if we were to specify it, it's string, but it's already uh, through implicit nature. We already know it's a string. It'd be great if the string class had an initials method on it. And that would allow me to automatically just say name.initials and for that name, it would automatically print the initials. So it would print DF. Well, we can do that in Kotlin and here's how we can do it. All right, so I've saved the time of actually typing the code for you and I'll walk you through it here. Now what I've done is created a new function on this line here. And this function itself, we start off by saying the type that we want to extend here is string. And then we want to say, here is the actual name of the method that we want to create. And then of course, it's going to go ahead and it's going to return a string, which as we see here, return a string. And then at that point in time, we're going to go ahead and go through all of this here. So here we have the values. We're just going to split it on, a, on an empty string. And then we're going to grab the first initial using the substring. We'll grab the first character off the first part of the array, off the first item in the array. And then we're going to grab the first character off the second item in the array. And then at that point, we're just going to use some string interpolation and return them together. So now if I run this, what we're going to see is we're going to see DF is printed. So now any string that I have, so if I say val equals, I could even have so the uh, something like a book that I'm reading, which is called, I read this book called the Daily Stoic. We say a Daily Stoic, I could say print ln book dot initials. And what we would get back is DS. So of course, DS is printed before they had the name and it printed. So if we move this up here, it would make a little more sense. So now we see DF and then DS is printed. So anything that has a string in it is going to be easily created. Now this is the string is not a class that we can control. This is not if we look at string, this is part of the Kotlin standard library. It's part of Java, we can't do anything about that but we are actually able to kind of slap on some additional methods for it using extension methods. So now what I usually prefer to do in this case is I like to have a file and I'll call this extensions. And that's where I like to put my files, my extensions. And if I have a lot of them, I'll call string extensions. I'll have integer extensions, but in this case, I'll start off very simply with one file called extensions. It doesn't need to be inside of a package. It can be a top level function as we're seeing here. Now at this point, I can call this from anywhere that I would like. So back in my main file, initials still works. So anywhere in my application now, I'm going to be able to use this dot initials. Now the same thing can happen over here in extensions. Let's say I wanted to extend um, the integer class is adult and this could return a boolean value and all this is going to do and we could actually single line this and we'll say this. Now notice how we said this because this is in regards to what type we are extending. So the extension function for string we said this dot split here what this as for the integer. So this greater than or equal to 18. So is adult. So I can single line this one. This one's easy. Again, this could also be if I wanted to do it the other way, which you may be more familiar with seeing to make more sense. We can do it this way here. It says convert to expression body. So there we go is adult. And I can even probably get rid of that. And so I can now really make this succinct. At this point, we are looking at, at, I don't know, 30 characters total from start to finish as adult. What this allows us to do is say val age equals 35. And I say print line age dot is adult. And you see how the code completion found it automatically. And we see that true came back. So now I was able to extend the integer class. I've extended the string class. And the furthermore, I could also do this with let's say a another model. So let's, I'm going to create another file here. Call this one models. Inside the models file, I'm going to have a data class. Oh, here we go, data class. Actually, let's do a regular class. Regular class person is going to have a val name, string, and a val age. And that's going to be uh, int. And then what I can do is I might have my person 
and I'll say uh, today I'm going to be 89 years old. So Don person, age 89. Now the cool thing about this is if I had my full name in here, uh, I could do something like this. I say person dot. Well, from here I could say initials. Person dot name dot initials. Now the problem that we're going to get here is that the name Don. If we run this here, we're going to get an exception because the initials is splitting on a string on a on a on a space. As we see here, this is what's happening here: it's splitting on a space. And so there's actually only one item in the array. Therefore, it's going to be blowing up. So that's not going to work right now. But if for some reason I had my name listed as Don Felker, like that, I could then issue that and I would then get back my correct initials. I would see DF again printed. So let's now go ahead and change this person class though. And let's kind of show how we can extend. Let's pretend that this class had a first name and then had a last name. This is a very common example that you're going to run into. This person could be a user, it could be anything else, and it's usually going to be a class that you do not control. So we'll say Felker would be my last name. And then we'll see, you know, again, and I've got a little bit older since the last time we spoke. I'm 90 now. And so a lot of times, if I would want to print someone's name, I'm going to say, of course, we're going to do string interpolation because it makes more sense. I'll say, person dot first name and then I'll do a space and then I'll do person dot last name and that works great. The problem is I find myself repeating myself over and over and over in my application and I'm doing this all over the place and but I can't come in and modify the person class because it's in a library somewhere. So what I could do is I could be in my extension class. I can come in here and I say fun person. So remember I have person and I can say full name. Full name. And I'm going to go ahead and just inline this one as well. And all this is going to be is this dot first name. And I'm actually going to in string interpolate this. So we'll do this dot first name space, this dot last name. Close that out. And now instead of doing this, I have extended another a person. So I can say person dot full name. I don't even need the quotes there actually. I can just get rid of all that. Now if person not full name, and if we run this, we'll see the same thing. Don Felker comes here. So if we say you know John Smith, first and last name John Smith. So we've actually again we're assuming that this person class is in some other library somewhere. We don't have control over it, but we do want to use it, and we want to make it easier to use. We can create an extension function called full name. Uh, we can create any type of other function that we want to throw onto that those types. Uh, such as we're building on top of the built-in primitive types that are inside of the type system, such as string and int, or even custom types that maybe we have control over or we don't have control over, and we would like to provide extension functions to them. A lot of times you might find an extension function very useful in a particular domain of your application, maybe in a couple of modules, and you might put that extension function over there. But that's how you can create extension functions in Kotlin.